Hello everyone, Lexington here, and I want to tell you about my fabulous trip to the Biltmore. When we first arrived, the grounds were beautiful, covered with flowers everywhere. Oh my God, gazebos, the scent of every flower in the air. It's apparent how well they upkeep the grounds here at Biltmore. Miles of flowers, beautiful bushes and trees. It really brings out the zen in anyone. Biltmore State is a historic house museum and tourist attraction in Asheville, North Carolina. Biltmore House, the main residence, is a chateau-style mansion built for George Washington Vanderbilt II between 1889 and 1895 and is the largest privately owned house in the United States. Construction on the house began in 1889, and in order to facilitate such a large project, a woodworking factory and brick area, which produced 32,000 bricks a day, were built on site. A three-mile railroad spur was constructed to bring materials to the building site. Construction on the main house required the labor of about 1,000 workers and 60 stonemasons. At first glance, this home is breathtaking by all the details, the windows, the doors, from the details to the roofing, to the archways and the doors, even the plants outside screamed regal living. Biltmore was certainly a home for a family who could sustain and live such a layered, lush life. George Vanderbilt opened his opulent estate on Christmas Eve of 1895 to family and friends from across the country. Now join me for a decadent tour of this beautiful American home. Vanderbilt filled his home with beautiful art from all over the world, from moldings around his fireplaces, to columns, artworks, furniture. He worked with thousands of people to make his dream home a reality. Biltmore is truly a place for art lovers, photographers, anyone who really enjoys a beautiful view. From a fashion perspective, this home is an inspirational buffet. From its clean lines to its smoldering saturated colors in every themed room. George and Edith Vanderbilt welcomed the arrival of their only child, a daughter, in August 1900. The birth of Cornelia Stuyvesant Vanderbilt, named in honor of prominent members of both her parents' families, was mentioned in the society pages of newspapers across the country. At last, this stunning library. Look up! to see the Chariot of Aurora painted in the 1720s by Italian artist Giovanni Pellegrini. This room is a testament to George Vanderbilt's passion for books. Here, it contains nearly half of his 22,000 volume collection, which ranges in subjects from American and English fiction to world history, religion, philosophy, art, and architecture. Just take a gaze at that table, a setting for a king. It's the accent pillows and corresponding drapes for me. The billiard room is where house guests play dominoes and billiards on the custom oak billiard tables made in 1895.
Vanderbilt's original vision for Biltmore was a country retreat where his loved ones could relax. With a fireplace in just about every room, one could really relax here. I absolutely adored how mannequins were displayed throughout the home giving insight as to how some of the guests moved about the quarters. Not to mention, revealing a time capsule of fashion from the 1900s. As the sun began to set over spiraling staircases and lit chandeliers, we found ourselves in the kitchen. Most of the prep work and cooking occurred here under direction of the chef who held one of the most important staff positions in the house. He led a team of more than a dozen kitchen workers who were responsible for preparing meals ranging from staff breakfast to gala dinners. By now, noon has arrived as guests begin to fill one of the many staircases in this beautiful estate. Keeping fit and healthy were popular pastimes at the beginning of the 20th century. Needle baths along the back wall were the equivalent of modern shower massages. The 70 gallon indoor pool was heated and still has its original underwater lighting. The unique tile vaulting was designed by architect Rafael Gustavino. Talk about decadence. There was even an elevator to deliver meals to certain rooms. Biltmore functioned much like a luxury hotel, requiring an exceptional staff to ensure day-to-day -day operations ran smoothly, even to the coordination of carriage rides. While gazing through these beautiful doors and completely absorbing every artistic artifact in this home, one couldn't help but think who could really obtain all this wealth and how? I mean, we've read all the facts and all the details about how this beautiful home came to be. But I tell you, after walking these halls and just seeing everything that the Biltmore had to offer, I couldn't help but feel that this whole entire home was built on lies and debauchery. And while this trip was taken for me to completely indulge in just the beauty of this home, I couldn't help but feel there was a presence in every room, almost screaming the wrongness done to them just for this elaborate living. Now we know the Biltmores had money money from every seemingly area of the world. Beautiful objects, beautiful clothing, but wealth never lasts forever. The mere decadence of this home could set anyone back years. One could argue this a mystery, but for me, it's a matter of morale. Whereas the world turns, you continue to capitalize on your wealth while the wellness and protection of your fellow man is being compromised daily. It's a bit tasteless, or shall I say, ignorant. While the Biltmore estate is notoriously known to be haunted, after doing some research, guests have allegedly experienced changes in temperature, objects moving, shadows appearing, and hearing voices at their visits. As my visit began to come to an end, I took a moment to enjoy the sights on this beautiful deck. Or should I say terraced or balcony? This tree with its twisted bark, beautiful, something right out of a storybook. It was also a great time to take a selfie. <laughs> and after exploring the ground some more, we found these really cool statues that almost wanted to speak to us. As our exploring came to an end, we found ourselves back to the garden. 
My final reflections of this home and the grandeur in which George and Edith Vanderbilt lived was visually marvelous, although one could question their code of morale and seemingly frivolous living. But I, as a man of entrepreneurship, can totally admire George for wanting to A, provide a sustainably large home for his family, even if it was just his wife, him, and his daughter. Everyone dreams of building a home for our loved ones and filling it with everything needed to survive and enjoy. And George built the mother load, the largest American home Americans had seen at that time, something we'd all marvel over, even after his death. George Vanderbilt knew that this home would act as an inspiration and serve as history, and ultimately be a conversation piece of sorts. And that's admirable. Well, fashion family, I, Lexington St. Zen, thank you for exploring with me. Until next time at Billboard.